this out would not exist. We couldn't do it without you. Make sure to repost and share different things you see on our page. The more you share, the better. Be sure to watch previous shows on our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you can be notified when we post new content. We really want to connect and hear from you. So please don't hesitate to message us. And to find us online, please go to Tech This Out America on Facebook. Tech This Out on YouTube, Twitter, and all social media platforms. Get whole scope at techthisoutnews.com. We connect the streets. Man, that's, you know, like, I that, that, that's yeah. an interesting. I, I, want, I, want to, I want to make that turn on that comment right there. Do you think there's a correlation between the rise in suicide and social media? Um. Well, it, I, first of all, I have zero respect for suicide because let me tell you why. I see homeless people every day on the street. I see people with missing limbs. You know, I see people in prison that got 120 years who was told they will never get out. You know, I see people out here that's fighting, you know, the, the war against lupus, you know what I mean, um, things of that nature. And they still don't kill themselves. People out here that are starving. They rather stand at the end of the freeway and beg for a, a quarter to go get some food before they kill themselves. So a person that just says, you know what, I'm going to kill my, I think that's a very selfish person. Now, I do know that it's, it's, it's um, mental health issues out here. My mother suffered some mental health issues, um, but I'm not a supporter of suicide. Like I, I don't, I don't even go to. I won't even go to the funeral. It could be a family member. I'm not gonna go to the funeral because what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sit out there in the crowd and say, "This punk motherfucker didn't really kill himself. This motherfucker mom up here crying. Look at these little kids. You can spark these kids in this world. This coward mother." So instead of me sitting there being disrespectful with my mind and walking up on the casket, and really want to hit the motherfucker in his mouth, right? I just don't go. <laughs> I got you. you know what I mean? Social media, you can turn that on, you can turn that off. If a person's attacking you, you can unfollow that person or block that person. So, you know, social media is, is it's just a tool to communicate with the world. That's all it is. And I don't take this shit personal, man. Like, people say all oh, kind of wild shit to me. I don't know if this is Point Dexter sitting in the middle of, 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 of Tennessee talking crazy to me. <laughs> but what I will do is say something back so vicious and so fucked up. They usually go somewhere else and, and they leave me alone to like three more posts. You know what I mean? But outside of that, man, use social media as a platform to generate income. Have fun with it. You know what I mean? You know, um, um, ex- you know, bring exposure to whatever it is that you're doing. But I would never take social media personally. So, so let me ask you this, Wack. If you could make a mobile app, what would it be? What would it do? If I could make a mobile app, I probably, I probably would make a, um, I probably would make an, uh, it'd probably be a mixture of it because I, I just was talking to Big U about this the other day because I got pulled over in Detroit. They called the drug dogs, all kind of shit out, right? I probably would make an app to where our people could file could submit an officer's name and badge number, and we have a team that took it from there and filed the necessary complaint with that with that department because what's going on, these officers do the shit that they do. They These officers do the shit that they do, and they get away with it because it's, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's no penalty for it. That's what I would probably do. It probably wouldn't have nothing to do with the industry. It mm. probably has something to do with Without giving our people a lane or a hotline to be able to call and say, hey, man, this just happened to me. This officer, this badge number. So we can start building the case and building the file against these officers. You're a goddamn yeah. genius. That's, that's probably what I would do. I think that's, uh, far that's as, a strong thought. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I would do. As far as um, um, anything else, it probably would be an information app. You know, because people ask me, like, how, how do how can I, how, what do I do, where do I get a management contract from? You know, how do I start, how do I get into the commercial trucking industry? Um, how do I get a loan? How does credit work? I would probably, I would create apps like that. It wouldn't have nothing to do with music. Mm-hmm. It would have something to do with real life and educating our people as a whole and giving, because sometimes people don't know. I didn't know. It was, people didn't file taxes in my house. My, my daddy was a drug dealer slash dope fiend. My mom was on welfare. Nobody talked about it. Buying a house, our house was Section Eight, mm. eighteen dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? So 
these are things that once you get older, you really you get a job and you're like, okay, I got taxes. Okay, how does taxes work? Okay, I want to become a homeowner. People just don't know. You ain't they, got the answers. They don't I know. seen you talking about, you know, saying the trucking business, and obviously I know you're an entrepreneur. Are you up on the cryptocurrency game? Is that something you nah, involved that in? Was a game. that was a game that slid by me mm. because I was so consumed and doing these other things that I was doing, the same companies I've been building. It slid by me, so I didn't get into it, but I got – a few of my brothers, like Stack Quo, they got into that thing real early and did real good. I still really don't understand it, but um, I do know you can access some of the money, not all of the money, but I think it's just setting us up for some crazy futuristic shit that's going to start going on. Uh-oh. Really. Okay. <laughs> now, speaking of, uh, of that, you know, we're in a different time, Wack, and so there's obviously uh, a different element of hip-hop. I mean, you uh-huh. know, it could be society but there's a lot more of the gay element in hip hop and now you yeah, have a yeah. lot of artists. Well, a lot of yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying or do you think has that always been there or do you think no i think homosexuality has always been there it just was people wasn't just open now it's cool it's kind of like you know the, the straight couples are kind of like the motherfucking minority these days you know what i mean it's kind of like you know you call a dude a fag or something motherfucker looking at you like what's wrong with you Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. pretty much half the people I deal with in the industry that I got to take meetings with, um, a lot of them are, are gay. And, and to me as a straight man, I don't have a problem doing business with somebody that's gay. This as long as they don't approach me like I'm gay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, as a man, you got to have some type of you you know, your, insecurity yeah. Yeah. to say, I can't talk to a gay dude. I can't. But listen, this is a human being. As long as he ain't looking at me, looking me up and down, and I can. It's disrespecting you. Yeah, I can care less what his sexual preference is because, you know, that's just like wondering what a, what a man is doing with his woman at night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can care less. You know what I mean? So, um, but that's what it is. I mean, look, look at Clive, Clive Davis himself. He came out and said he's been gay since like the early 80s or some crazy shit. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Well, well, no, but that makes you wonder yeah. about some of the people that's under Clive. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? But, hey, that's another story. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. What about, like, with these, you know, a lot of the artists, what are your thoughts when you see artists wanting to wear dresses and things of that nature? Like, what? how do you define that element? Because it seems like that's supposed to be, you know, acceptable. Now, for me, you know, as a straight man. It's been acceptable, though. It's been acceptable, though. Mm-hmm. See, see, I ain't probably, let me tell you what it is. Let me, let me, let me correct everybody. Hip-hop was always a always associated with some actually, it's cool hip hop was already associated with some gangster shit right now let's go way back fuck it let's look at Prince what was Prince attire like true this shit ain't new right let, I mean look at fucking Boy George yeah just look at Boy George Prince uh, Michael Jackson right so I think it's more of a fashion thing and a fad thing for is Young Thug, right? People see Young Thug, he put on a dress, a hat, all this kind of crazy shit, right? Every mm. time I see Young Thug, his woman is with him. Mm. So a person would say, well, because he wears this, is he gay? I don't know. I don't think he's gay because every time I see the man, he's with his woman, like every fucking time. In the studio, in the club, he's with his woman. Sometimes when people see that you talk about them, when they do certain things, sometimes they use it as a promotional tool. But, I mean, you know, to each his own, man. You know, me personally, I'm not wearing skin tight jeans. Fuck 230 pounds. I ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I just wear a pair of jeans with the rips in them. You know what I mean? Just got them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe because it's summertime. Maybe I'm on sweet. <laughs> but, you know, to each his own. To each his own. Like, even in school. Even in school, bro. Think about it. It was always that for people. Whether it was the the water all back and the black thing and then all hey, Wack. the people that they... <laughs> Hey Wack, your phone going out, brother. Can you hear Yo, me? Yo, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now, bro. I hear you now, Wack. Oh yeah, yeah, it was all it's always a group of people that's gonna dress different. And those that dress different, we're gonna talk about them. Yeah. Now yeah. my son walk in the house. With some crazy shit, he's getting the fuck out of my house. That was you asking me. I ain't fucking with that. Mm-hmm. But am I going to look down on those that do? Nah, it ain't going to happen. 
Mm. I ain't really got no opinion about it. Got you. Understood. Now, you know, I want to take you back to something we were talking about as it relates to the whole blood thing. And, and, mm-hmm. and it's certainly gone, and I would say at this point it's global, but it's certainly across the country. So when I say flagging, I call flagging. it flagging, not gang banging. Gang banging is, is the act of violence against another gang member. You mm. know what I'm saying? Half these niggas ain't never had a fight in their life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I call it flagging. If they flagging, they represent it. Cool. But like I'm going to tell you, when the gang banging starts, for well, instance, Chris Brown, right? Chris Brown, he represents Food Town Power Room, right? He got some reputable cats with him, some solid cats with him that's really fun bopping like that, right? Mm-hmm. But here goes the fucked up part about him. He got a little cop and crip sitting in youth authority, or he in the penitentiary. And he like, you know what? When I get out and I catch this fool, I'm going to smoke him. Look, he mean that because he want that strike. A motherfucker really go to jail and not have a problem with saying I'm doing 25 to life for killing Chris Brown. Right? Mm. Yeah. Straight up. See, now, this is the thing Chris got to worry about because he don't know these faces to know that this dude right here is the enemy of my neighborhood that I represent. You see what I'm saying? Mm. This is the thing he got to worry about. This is when it gets fucked up and it gets a little tricky. You know what I'm saying? But they jumping on jets. They coming through backstage. They coming through the rooftop. They not really worrying about it. And it's a lot of them out here. But some of these niggas is serious about it. Now, y'all got to remember one thing, though. Always remember one thing. Mm-hmm. Them niggas is getting three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a show. So watch who you play with. Because mm-hmm. they really got real niggas with them. Got you. Do you think That's that- the point. Yeah. They real got real niggas with them. That's going to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chris Brown got some real food towns with him. Real shit. Some G homies. Rick Ross do. You know what I mean? Cash money. They got him. They, all the homies fucking with them is real. It's a lot of them that's real. That they going to go. The artists ain't got to be the gangsters. They got gangsters with them, though. True. Do you think that the Bloods, you know, or, or, or gangs can be unified into one organization? Uh, at this stage of the game, and in terms of what has evolved yeah, I into? Def- I definitely, I definitely, we've been working on that, me, my brother Wacko from Westside Palmo, Big U, um, Neighborhood 60s, Blue from Long Beach, insane, um, Carver T, Carver Park, Compton Crip. Um, you know, it's a, it's a host of us that have been working on that. You know what I mean? That's, if you look at it in the last 10 years, it's been minimum game violence when it comes to the music industry. You haven't heard about a... a, a a fucking show getting shot up, or the club Crips and Bloods going at it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's because the powers that be have sat out at the table and we figured out. So we've been working on that. You know what I mean? We've been really, we probably about two to three years out from creating a major corporation that's just us. Now, we got to be careful with it because we got to look at what happened to the Black Panther Party. You know, a motherfucker got to win to win, not win to lose. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, we got to come into this the right way, in which we have. Big U right now has uh, developing options in the Crenshaw District, which he's pretty much helping uh, minimize the gang violence in these areas. Blue has Long Beach, you know what I mean? So Carver, Carver T got comp, you know, uh, Wack over West Side, he got his side on the Paul side. So it's like, you know, uh, Team Frog got his from Cedar Block. So we, we working. You guys may not see it. But you re- you recognize it in, in the things that's not happening. Man, social media lets us know where everybody's at. I mean, let's be real. Motherfucker, life only costs 1500 right now. It's hard out here in the street. I think a life costs $1,500. That's it. So if niggas was out here really on that, that would be happening. But we're moving more towards solidifying and consolidating and rectifying the situation. So let, let's talk about gang banging in this age of Donald Trump with racism and everything else that we're seeing, you know, saying black on black crime versus police brutality. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on all of that? Um, police brutality. Um, sometimes it's justifiable. Sometimes it's not, you know, I'm gonna let everybody know. Everybody know what it is. You was taught this shit in grade school, man. Police pull up. You know what I mean? Hey, listen, you're a street nigga. You dirty run. Take your chances. But if the police pull up and he asks you to get on the wall, you ain't about to ask him why. It's because it's a, a position, a person in a position of authority telling you to get on the wall, give him proper identification, let the man do his job. 
you get to talking crazy and running and scuffling with him, and y'all ask 